Butch spotted it from twenty meters away. I'll swear it. Glimpsed the moss, tugged a little tighter maybe, or a tiny crack in the earth, and then there he was, sunk down on his knees, thrusting his fingers deep in the soil and cracking it open, like a cave. White gold, he crowed, just like I told you. That's ten bucks. And then he found twenty-two more. Hidden deep in the woods, a different sort of gold rush is underway in Canada's north. Rather than strip the earth in search of its treasures, it leaves the land the way it found it, wild, so the gold will grow again. The hunt is on for wild foods, for fiddlehead greens and cloudberries, for mushrooms, like the white matsutake Butch specializes in. Forty-eight hours later, they sat in stores in Japan, tagged at the equivalent of $120 a pound, or on plates in high-end restaurants in Vancouver and New York, where demand for wholesome, natural, foraged foods has never been higher. Two weeks later, the mushrooms moved. In the morning dark, Picker Pete came knocking. Hurry it up. I'm taking you to my best patch today. The prettiest one you're ever going to see. And so we drove. It's like a cathedral in there, the moss, those trees, the best office in the world. And as we rounded the bend, there it was. A field of open sky, framed by sawed-off stumps, full of twisted piles of thorny brush, not a tree in sight, clear-cut. Pete's face fell, though his words were calm. Guess the loggers have been here since last year. We gotta go somewhere else. He'd loved that place for more than a decade. Despite years of dedication, this industry remains the fragile accomplishment of a ragtag society of itinerant harvesters and field buyers. Almost everyone involved is a refugee from ruined local resource economies, from shuttered sawmills and denuded oceans, from blighted reserves. They're more or less ignored by forestry, but they're undeterred. Undeterred by the constant cloud of a clear-cut in a precious patch, by being at the mercy of urban cultures and ways of doing business that can feel almost designed to keep people like them out. I spent two years living and working with rural harvesters of wild food and the urban entrepreneurs who sell it, producing the knowledge needed to help them, as well as the resource experts responsible for our forests, to better understand one another and realize the hidden value of Canada's wild spaces. Recent data show our wild mushrooms alone are worth $43 million a year, and that's from just a sliver of the vast forests that blanket our nation. The social and environmental value is even greater. It's priceless. My work is helping First Nations build culturally relevant businesses based on work out on the land. It's urging foresters to manage for wild products as well as logs. It's a treasure trove in the Canadian wilderness, a sustainable resource for the future, and it's work funded by Shirk.